Hey, welcome to the Goat Cave. I figured I'd show you guys around the studio. I constantly get questions about, you know, some of the stuff that's in here and whatnot. And if you guys have listened to me talk on the show before, you know, I'm a huge fan of BMX, music, um, you know, movies, any kind of pop culture thing. So yeah, let's uh, see what we got in here. Last year, we did the Money Talks Jam for 2020. And my good friend, Chris Johnson, was able to shoot this awesome photo of the crew. So yeah, I just keep it right in my work area every day. From everything. So when I was filming Space Goats, this was the board that I used for uh, all of my roller shots. And at the premiere, I decided that I wanted everybody that was there to sign it. And uh, yeah, man, I keep it all right here. Everybody that signed this are some of the earliest supporters of uh, HVX Goat Productions. Recently, I was able to get my hands on an N64. Really stoked on that. When I was a kid, that's all I did was just play N64 all the time. Um, but yeah, off to some bike stuff here. We have this Pure Hell hat from uh, No Cap. Um, but yeah, No Cap was a sponsor of the show, if you guys remember that. Those guys were super rad. They sent me a big box of stuff and uh, you know, they were like, give away a bunch of it. So I think we did a giveaway on Instagram. Um, but yeah, a bunch of people got some free hats and whatnot. Uh, Entity, BMX Shop, they sent me this, The Fun Doesn't Stop, their newest DVD, which you can actually buy um, on their web store right now, so go and check it out. It's really good, man. I really enjoyed it. Shout out to Matt and uh, Steve from Entity. So this Ruben sticker was actually sent to me by uh, Mr. Jeff Kosis along with the um, Stu Johnson VX from the video, Anthem 2. Um, as everybody kind of knows, I'm a huge fan of Anthem. And uh, yeah, I was really stoked to get my hands on the camera and even the sticker is so cool, man. Yeah, so thank you, Jeff. So uh, I always get questions about this frame. This is a Sabrosa Pandora DTT, double top tube frame. Um, yeah, everybody always wonders why the top tube is so, you know, small, but it's because it's a double top tube. So, you know, we can just throw stuff right in the middle there. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, I love this frame. I had two of them and I really wish they'd bring it back, man. I loved it. I would totally ride one right now. To uh, explain a little bit of the tech that goes into the podcast, um, as many of you guys know, this is a one man operation. I host as well as produce the show. So basically, you know, starting off, we use this computer here for my notes as well as my uh, FaceTime, Zoom, or Skype. So, you know, the video call happens on this screen and this screen will end up going into the computer behind me here. Um, yeah, and then I can actually use my video switcher that I have here to control the different camera angles. So yeah, right off the bat, we have the FaceTime angle and then typically, we would have my angle on this screen. It's not on there because we're using the camera for this. And then this one is the top down. So yeah, there's uh, some really interesting stuff. A lot of people think that I edit the whole show after I record it. No, that takes way too long. I've done that in the past and that's actually what killed my first podcast that I tried to do. It was just the editing was way too much. So yeah, this video switcher is a life changer. Uh, yeah, and then I use a road mic for myself, and then I have a few different ones. I'm gonna replace that red one off to the side. That microphone sucks. I always have issues with it, but right now with COVID, I haven't had anybody in the studio since September 2020, and yeah, I don't know when I'll be able to have someone in here. Um, so yeah, mics aren't a big deal right now, but yeah, to kind of explain how things work, this mic is set for my audio board. Same thing with the computer, the audio comes from this and into my mix board and into the uh, program that I use. With the audio, typically if we're doing a phone call and there's four people in here, they all need to be able to hear it. So I have this little headphone um, amplifier and it's great. You know, you can plug in four different headphones and easily, you know, everybody can control their own volume and whatnot. 
And then uh, this little stopwatch here is great. So as I do the show, I try and write down what time, you know, certain topics happen at so I can figure out for highlights later and whatnot. Still not very great at it, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be a great addition to the show. I'm lucky enough that I actually have most of the cameras that, you know, I've used over the years. So starting out, I used this Canon GL1 and it filmed, I wanna say probably 40% of my first DVD. And then I upgraded to this DVX. So this is kind of the tape version that came before the HVX, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, I used this camera for the last, I think 30, 40%. And then I think there was like 20% of that video that was filmed with just random cameras, you know, GoPros or whatever. Um, yeah, and the big thing about tape with me is that you know, I went through so much of it filming for the first video that I was really over it and the cameras I was using, a lot of the tapes by the end of it were getting really messed up from the actual camera. So yeah, when I upgraded to the HVX, it was really big for me. I really love this camera. It has that same old school camcorder feel and uh, you know, you're still able to use HD and whatnot with it. So with the HVX, it's not true HD, it's 1080i. Um, but yeah, I still love it anyways. It's a great camera to use. Yeah, the zoom rockers on it are amazing. I love that feel while using long lens. Um, and then using P2 cards is kind of interesting. I would rather if they were SD, so I guess I could switch to, uh, I think an HMC is kind of the upgraded version, but yeah, I love it. It's a great camera. You know, it, this single camera filmed all of Space Goats, which is incredible, you know? So this is my personal copy of Fuck Asses, and then this is my sealed copy. Um, with any full length videos that I make, I try and keep a sealed copy that I'll probably never open. Um, yeah, and then I have my master copy of Fuck Asses here. So this is used to basically create the different copies of the video. Um, you just bring it to a video printer and they'll go from there. So I have my master copy of Space Goats, and then we have my sealed copy and my personal copy. So these are my uh, papers that we did last year for 420. Um, I always try and keep at least one product and if I do number them, I always keep number one. So yeah, I love these things, man. These were uh, such a great idea. I have these flyers that uh, I gave out to shops to give away. And then up here we have my sticker packs that we did. And then some pins over here. I don't know how well you can see them. Um, but yeah, and then we've got hats that I did for Space Goats. These actually really didn't go anywhere and I kind of regret um, not pursuing that and trying to make those. So this poster was actually made by Rob Duff for the release of Space Goats. I think we sold 20 of them. Um, I ended up taking number one, but I regret not taking four out of 20. I always get people asking about uh, what these lists are around the room. These are actually set lists from different concerts that I've been to. So this one is from the Planet Smashers, one of my favorite uh, Canadian ska bands. And then I have some, uh, you know, scattered around the room. I'm a huge music fan and uh, I really like to try and pick up vinyl. I know I'm a vinyl hipster, whatever. Um, but yeah, I have a bunch of stuff that I love. I don't really collect old vinyl. You know, I always meet people that are really into that and that's just not me. I like trying to support the bands that I'm into and a lot of them are newer, um, you know, ska punk bands or uh, punk bands in general. I also have some BMX magazines and, uh, you know, just some other great reading material like the Hard Times book. Um, my BMX DVD collection is so fucking small. So if you guys make videos, you know, if anybody out there is a BMX DVD producer or anything like that, you know, hit me up, I'd love to get a copy of your video. Yeah, one of my biggest regrets was that I ended up taking a bunch of old magazines and cutting them up and putting them on top of my desk. And it looks cool, but I just feel so stupid for doing that. I never should have done that because I have a bunch of magazines now with no covers on them. This awesome painting was given to me by uh, Scott Loist, AKA Spot the Looney. Um, yeah, he found out that our rabbit is named Nibbler and he painted this awesome bender from Futurama painting for us. So thank you, Scott, so much. This is the infamous wooden cock bottle opener. 
Um, yeah, a coworker actually gave this to me, so thank you so much. I love it. It's uh, a hilarious part of the show. These are my bag of salty dicks. Um, yeah, my dad and I made this funny skit for his Instagram. And yeah, you guys can go watch it and eat a bag of dicks while you're at it. So recently, I got my hands on this awesome photo of uh, Tony Hawk and Rick Thorne doing a doubles run at Tony's warehouse. Yeah, I think they only made a thousand of those, so to be able to own one is pretty fucking rad. Um, and then up here, this was actually given to me by Jeff way back when he did, I think it was like episode 28 or something. But yeah, he had that painted by the one and only FBM owner, Steve Crandall, you know, BMX godfather himself. So yeah, to own a Crandall painting is pretty awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Matt from Entity sent me a bunch of stuff a while back, including this really nice letter kind of explaining how he, you know, started his shop and whatnot. And I really love this stuff so much that uh, it's got his own little spot, you know, in the studio. So shout out to Matt at Entity. This tripod normally is where the camera that this is being filmed on would sit. Um, and then we also have a light with a soft box pointing towards the guest. So when we do have a guest here, this will help making sure that they're nice and lit without being too overexposed. We also have uh, this little webcam here. So this is used for the guest angle. I also have one way up above and that's the top down. Um, yeah, and then we've got these pool tiles. Those pool tiles are pretty cool because that was the first pool that I ever rode. Yeah, so to have those is pretty awesome. So as many of you guys know, um, the studio is actually in our apartment, which means that we kind of have to be able to make it work for multiple things, right? Like we just don't have the space to have it built out like this all the time. So what's great is that this desk actually collapses down and we gain so much space by doing that. So yeah, I'll just show you guys how I basically do that now. So yeah, we uh, gained so much space by doing that. It just makes it easier to kind of live in here and also be able to still have multiple people for a session. So why don't I show you guys kind of what it takes to build out the studio and get ready for a recording. Thanks for checking out the studio. And before we go, I really just want to say a huge shout out to uh, Ant from Harvester Bikes, Wonderland Studios, and Matt from Entity BMX. These guys are continuously out there doing something for the community. And on top of that, they all sponsor this show. Um, yeah, and then also, huge shout out to everybody who's been donating through PayPal. As many of you guys know, this takes up a lot of my time and you know it's not free. So. Any donations are very much appreciated. You know, thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, the future of the Goat Cave is very bright and there's much more to come. So until then, peace.